Yes, I think so. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here today to, le uh, to learn more about uh, the MISC Accelerator. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Saja Al Idris. I'm uh, a senior project officer at MISC. Uh, I'm running the MISC Accelerator uh, this year. Uh, I have here Henrik, if you wanna introduce yourself. Yes, please. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Henrik. I'm the program manager for Pluck and Play. Great to have you all here. Excited about today's event. And please uh, ask any questions that you have along the other way. Back to you, Saja. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you, Henrik. Uh, so yeah, today uh, we will we will we will go over the program and open the floor for some uh, questions and ask, answers. Uh, and we will have uh, two MISC Accelerator alumni, uh, Ras Mal and uh, Jumlati. They will talk about uh, their experience uh, from cohort one. Uh, then lastly, we're gonna have uh, an ex exclusive fireside chat between the Chief Programs Officer, uh, Omar Najjar uh, of MISC and the founder and CEO uh, of Plug and Play, Saeed uh, Amidi. Uh, oh, okay, so let me start uh, by giving a brief, uh, next slide, yeah, let me start uh, by giving a brief on the MISC Foundation. Uh, so the MISC Foundation uh, was found, uh, is a non-profit or organization that was founded by His Royal, Royal Highness uh, uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, in uh, 2011. Uh, it's, uh, the foundation is devoted to uh, empowering the Saudi youth. Uh, next slide. Uh, okay, so MISC, MISC focuses mainly on the country's youth and provides them with uh, various means to foster and empower their talents and to shape the future of the kingdom, uh, of the kingdom uh, with, uh, with MISC ambitious uh, goals and uh, vision. Uh, next slide. And so to pursue this uh, vision of MISC Foundation, uh, we have four different tracks, uh, the MISC entrepreneurship, uh, leadership, skills, and community, each with uh, its own uh, projects. So this year we have uh, 25 different uh, projects, uh, all tailored with the main objective of uh, empowering youth. Um, so uh, as we have, uh, and. Uh, uh, let me know. Uh, so uh, to MISC uh, establishes uh, these programs and partners with the local, local and global uh, organizations to help implement uh, these projects. So the MISC Accelerator, we have uh, partnered uh, with the Plug and Play in order to deliver uh, this project uh, to entrepreneurs. And uh, Henrik, yeah, go ahead and give a brief on Plug and Play. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Sadia. So it's uh, amazing for Plug and Play to, to, to really be in the, in, in the kingdom. We are both proud and humble to, to, to be working with organization like, uh, like, like MISC and other organization. But of course, our favorite program is the one we're doing with MISC, the MISC Accelerator powered by Plug and Play. But we're here today, of course, to introduce you to the second cohort, what it is. But a little bit about Plug and Play. So I'm sure most of you know about Plug and Play, mostly for accelerator programs. So we are based and running accelerator programs in more than 20 countries around the world, from more than 40 offices uh, around the, the, the world. We're actually crossing the, 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 the 50 offices, I think, next, uh, next month. And we're doing more than 70 bespoke and tailored accelerator programs on a global basis. On average, we... Uh, we uh, we are not on average, but last year alone, because we just got the numbers, we accelerated more than 2,400 startups on a global basis. When we're working with, with startups, one of the biggest elements for, for that is, of course, working closely with our more than 500 corporate uh, partners and more than 250 global v leading VCs from around the, the, the world in order to support and help our startups on a global basis. Because... <laughs> Beside our global network of accelerators, we're also one of the most active and successful early tech startup 
investors averaged investing at around 250 plus startups on an annual basis um, on that. So, but it all began in what is uh, dubbed the lucky building where our founder and CEO Said had a building and Google moved in. And as we usually say from there, the rest is, is history. He got a whole in, in, ingrained in the community and coming to the point was I said the, earlier where we're one of the, the, the largest companies doing accelerators and in an early tech we have VC investors in a global basis. A few of our startups from, from those days is of course Google moving in, PayPal, I'm sure you know, and Logitech and, and Danger. I'll come back to some, a little bit more of these things. But again, we're represented all around the, the world. We're growing tremendous uh, speed at, at the moment. And no big in officers on a monthly uh, monthly basis uh, around the world. Uh, so very, very, very excited. Now we are more than 700 uh, people. And here in the region, we are we're coming close to 30 people with about 11 or 12 right now based out of our working on our Saudi operations. And we are hiring continuously to support our growing number of our programs here in the, in the region as well. Beside in Saudi, we have three offices in, in, in UAE and we've got operations in, in Morocco, Turkey, and, and Egypt uh, as well. So very quickly about our unicorns, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are excited about as excited as we are. So last year alone, we added another 10 unicorns or realized another 10 unicorns in our portfolio. It's absolutely tremendous, which puts our amount of unicorns, just over 30 unicorns in our portfolio on a global or global basis. So we mean what we say when we're doing investments in the, in, in the startups. So that was a little bit about the plug and play. And of course, about the fantastic uh, organization that is the Miss Foundation, especially the Miss Entrepreneurship uh, Organization. So let's go a little bit into to the actual program. So Saja and I thought that we would start a little bit by, by taking you through our inaugural program. So last year we had the first, uh, the first program. We had some absolutely fantastic startups. Two of them, as you know, we are having with us here today to give a little bit the, 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 the experiences from their perspective. But looking at these startups, the journey that they've gone through, the things that they've managed to, to, to accomplish. So like, as you've probably seen, like Ship Blue, they raised 2.4 million US dollars. Reva raised more than 2.3 million, uh, $3 million. Hello World Kids, they raised 2.4 million dollars. Uh, Alguro, they raised 600,000 US dollars. Yura and partnered with Wahei, Huawei. Yinmo created a partnership with the, uh, with the Saudi Health uh, Council. I could go on and on and on with amazing things that these startups have, have done both before, during, and after the, the program that finished with the demo day in, in December. Looking forward to hearing the latest updates from the two startups that are with us here to, to today as well. What fantastic news and updates and an amazing, amazing cohort. So there's some big shoes to fill for, for, for the next, uh, next cohort, don't you think, uh, Saja? Yeah, uh, we're, we're really excited for cohort two and we hope uh, and we're sure it's going to be amazing, like cohort yes. one. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. So a little bit about the amazing start we had to the collaboration. So here's just a few photos of some of the things that we had. The first so the first uh, cohort was was basically a virtual cohort, but we of course we had the demo day. As you can see some photos from here. I'm sure a few of you attended the, the, the demo day. An absolutely fantastic, fantastic day. I'll come back into to, to that um, for 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 you guys. Uh, but a lot, a little bit about the, some of the very recent. I think this is from the last uh, seven, eight, ten days. Is some of the latest things that that, that the cohort and the MISC entrepreneurship and the MISC accelerator powered by plug and play. So first of all, we were mentioned by, by Forbes magazine Middle East as one of the 10 most notable startup accelerators in MENA here in January. Absolutely fantastic, especially bearing in mind that we literally started the program four months ago. We launched the, the program. So an amazing feat. But just as, as impressive is the new report that came out in, in, in Saudi around the perception of the tech ecosystem, entrepreneur ecosystem in KSA, both the MISC accelerator, but also the launch pad that Sajid mentioned earlier are on the top most recognized, actually significantly most recognized uh, programs in the entirety of the, of, uh, of, the, of the kingdom. So that's absolutely fantastic. And of course, we're looking to build on, on that foundation and that success in the, in the next one. And of course, do much better with the next, uh, with the next group. So, so that's a little bit about the, uh, the, the, the cohort as it's been uh, so far.
Before I go into to, 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 to talk a little bit about the, the, the MISC accelerator, powered by plug and play, our second cohort. Again, if there are any questions, please put them in the chat function. We will have, as Sajan mentioned, a Q&A session later on in this. So please, already now, if you have any, we will answer them when we come to the Q&A questions. So please just ask your questions uh, in the uh, in the small tab on your screen. Super. So this is what it's all about. All about the MISC Accelerator powered by plug and play cohort number two. Super. So let's start with, with the objective of the, of the cohort. Sacha talked a little bit about it. the objective of the MISC Accelerator powered by plug and play is to support the fast growing tech entrepreneurial talent and exceptional local based startups whilst empowering global startups that are eager and able to scale into the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So what does that mean? The program that we have devised, uh, if I start with the, with the framework around this, is that it is a zero equity, so we don't dilute the startups that come into the program. There's no equity, but there's no grants and there's no investments uh, as well. It's a 12 week accelerator program. It's tailor made by the by the by 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 MISC and plug and play based on what we see and what we have looked into the market that there's a need for in, in this. So there'll be a lot of different aspects that you might not see in a normal accelerator, but there'll be a lot of a uh, lot of aspects that added to, to, to that. So when we're looking at the program this time around, we're going to do it as a bit of a hybrid model. Obviously, the last one was virtual because of the whole Corona uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And now it's looking to, to, to ease up a little bit, a little bit, inshallah, that that's what's going to happen uh, for, for, for us and all around the world. But the one thing that we were missing a little bit, that was the, the social aspect of the accelerator program. So this time around, yes, it is mainly going to be virtual, but we're going to have two focus weeks at least. So the first focus week will be in the beginning of the program where we're going to fly the international and the regional startups in and we're going to get the startups from the rest of, uh, of, of Saudi in to, the, uh, to, 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 to Riyadh for a five-day uh, focus week where there's going to be training, introductions, meet and greet, networking sessions, uh, deal flow sessions, We'll be doing interviews with the startups. There'll be a lot of things happening in that week, but of course, and also a lot of socializing, a lot of the startups getting to know each other and getting to know what we call the MISC accelerated team. So that's the combined team between MISC and plug and play. Um, so a lot of things will happen in that week. And there'll also be an opportunity to meet a lot of the startups from the former, uh, from the former alumni uh, in there. So this time around, just like with the first startup, we're looking for 20 startups. Our main focus is, of course, from Saudi Arabia and from, from the region here, but we're looking with a wider scale. We're looking for the best startups that joins the, the, the accelerator. So the accelerator is going to be focusing around training and develop. So the training and development, that's going to be around your mastership, mastership classes. So every week we're going to have different themes, different master classes with experts from KSA from the region, from Europe, from Silicon Valley to talk about financing, funding, pitching, growth, scaling, team, whatever you, you want. We're also going to have clinics to talk about more specific, more niche elements for the founders of the team, but also for the wider team to, to participate in. There's going to be panels, there's going to be fireside chat, there is going to be a lot of elements, but not too much. So we're focusing in based also on their feedback from the alumni and from the startups in the cohort to make sure that we maximize the time without taking too much time from, from the startups. We know that they have a busy day. And the main focus is, of course, for us to support them in their growth journey in the kingdom and above and beyond. Besides all this training and knowledge transfer, we're also going to have a lot of mentorship and expert sessions. So we're going to be assigning the startups with specific mentors throughout the program. And after the program, you're going to have, as I mentioned, a lot of networking mixers and deal flow sessions, both physically and vertically, or virtually throughout the entirety of the program, leading up all the way, of course, also to uh, uh, a pivot, not a pivot, but a, but a main aspects around the demo day that, that's going to come at the end of the program, of course. All the startups will then have access to the MISC and the plug and play global and regional uh, alumni and network and support. Because after the program, there will be a six month 
post-program support organized by MISC and Plug and Play in collaboration to ensure that we support you on your ongoing growth throughout the, 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 the sixth month and of course uh, be beyond. So not only will you be part of a very prestigious MISC Accelerator, you'll also be part of the global uh, Plug and Play alumni for both of these organizations. So I hope that answers a lot of your questions around the, 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 the program. Satya, if you have anything to add before we go into the startups that we're looking for? Yeah, amazing. Uh, thank you, Hendrik. Uh, so yeah, for the startups, for those who meet the eligibility criteria, if you are early stage tech-based startups and you are looking for the support uh, uh, to grow your startup or for, uh, for the foreign startups, if you are looking for the support to scale into the kingdom, so definitely apply to the MISC Accelerator. Yes, exactly. But remember, big shoes to, to, to fill, but please, uh, please do apply. I'm happy to say that we are already above, way above the, the amount of applications we had in the last cohort. So it's a steep uh, competition, but we are looking for, for, for the best of the best. And that's also why we are putting so much energy behind creating and resources behind creating an absolutely amazing accelerator program for these 20 startups that are coming into this program. So very exciting. So that's a little bit about the objective, the, the, the profiles and the framework of the of the of the accelerator program so again coming into a little bit more in depth on, on some of these things so we'll have weekly master classes and workshop clinics and other elements for for all these startups they will be either virtually or physically so of course physically in the focus weeks that we're going to have in the beginning and the start and the end of the program most of that will be conducted at the MISC headquarters in, in, in Riyadh, but we're also going to have an online uh, virtual platform that we'll be utilizing for, for everybody that's part of the, the program. As mentioned, we're going to do a lot of cohort and community events, both socializing in the, in the cohort, also during the week and on a weekly basis to get the, 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 the startups to also work very closely with each other. They can be their best uh, teachers because the startups in the cohort are going through the same uh, the, the same problem even though they might be from very very different uh, industries there's a lot of the same issues that there are challenges that they might be, be going through again with teaming up with some of the best mentors from the region and internationally for you guys to, to, to engage with. And we're doing a lot of networking and deal flow throughout the program with VCs and with corporates, both from, from Saudi, but also from, uh, from, from beyond and that. Everything is gonna lead down to, of course, a demo day. And I'll show you a little bit of a photos uh, around that and what's happening in that. But of course, we're also gonna have uh, uh, perks for, 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 for the startup. So there's gonna both gonna be perks from, from MIS, but also from, uh, from Plug and Place Global Perk uh, uh, Repository uh, and database that we have with all the major uh, major companies out there. So there's hardly any limit to the amount of perks and, and the aspects that you can gain from this, whether it be Google, AVS, whatever it might be from, from Microsoft. There's so many different perks in there. So for the startup that come into this, they will have full access to all the different perks and discounts that they get through through the, 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 the plug and play and MISC accelerator program power by plug and play in that. But of course, we also have some aspects that's fantastic. I love our perk and our swag for the last for the last cohort for the Silicon Valley vest and a bag, a t-shirt, and all these things to show where, where you're part of the, 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 the plug and play powered by the plug and play MISC accelerator program in, the, in that. So coming into a little bit. So what's happening? What's the process from, from now? So first, let's look at the entirety of the, of the process. So we opened the application on January the 2nd, and the applications will be closing next week. Well, actually this weekend, sorry, on the 30th. Then on the 7th, we will create a short list that will invite for the boot camp on uh, February the 7th. It's going to be a full day boot camp that we'll get more into. And then on the 9th and on the 10th, there's going to be a selection day in uh, in, uh, in in Riyadh for the startups that have made it through uh, to, to, to this part. So, and then the program will, will officially start around the 3rd of, uh, of January and the demo day will be on the 1st of, uh, of June uh, this year. So, where are we now? So the awareness there is, of course, to answer any questions, create awareness about the program, about MISC and about the startups uh, that, that is coming in. So the first days that we're in right now until the 30th, that is the, the sourcing. That's where we are reaching out to the startups. Startups are applying online 
to, to, to be part of this. Then the next part is that next week, we will be shortlisting this down to about 30 startups. These 30 startups will then be invited to come in and pitch on the bootcamp uh, day for everybody to, to be part of. And then they will then be invited into the selection days. The selection days, as I mentioned, will be over two days. Also, on I said before, on the 9th and the 10th. And here, the selection committee that will be represented by Plug and Play, by MISC, and by a few of the, of the top VCs in the, in the kingdom will participate in that. Together, that uh, commi so the committee will then choose the 20 startups that will be invited to participate in the MISC Accelerator Power by Plug and Play cohort number two. Super. The demo day for those guys that saw the, the, the demo day last year, I think we can put in the link to that to the demo day uh, Ash in, in the speak here so the guys can go in and watch the, the demo day video from the much larger event that was to the whole misc entrepreneurship event that both featured the, the global entrepreneurship uh, awards and the the misc entrepreneurship launchpad but also the misc accelerator demo day in a whole day uh, of, of, of networking and activities and more than 500 people sitting in the audience most of those of course from the leading uh, bcs and from the ecosystem across uh, saudi arabia and also from, from from the region so we can please put in that link in the in the box but below but of course as i said the demo day is a big one this one is going to be just for the misc accelerator as it's looking right now it's going to be a full day events with deal flow you guys will be the the, the, the finalists will be uh, invited into pitch directly to the entirety of the commission okay uh, community and ecosystem it will be a live event but it will also be streamed on, on a global basis for, 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 for those that are interested in watching in that. So an absolutely fantastic end to hopefully what will be an absolutely fantastic uh, program. Super. So any questions from, from, from here, then please do put them in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the chat function below that. I don't know if there's anything I missed out. If there's anything you want to add to this, uh, Sadia? Uh, no, thank you, Henrik. Uh, I think everything is clear. Uh, and yeah, we can go ahead with this session and leave uh, the Q&A till, till the end. Yes. Perfect. So as we usually just say, don't don't trust my word, but trust some of the, the, the startups that's been part of the, the, the program. So with us today, we have uh, from Ras Mal, we've got the, the man, the myth and the legend, Nasser from Ras Mal organization to talk to you today. We also have the man with a plan, Karim Shaban. Um, to talk to you about their experiences in the program. Should we start with NASA first? And NASA, you're already online. So a big warm welcome to, to, to NASA. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. We're excited to hear about your experience and of course also about Rasmal. Thank you. Thank you, Hendrik. Always a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, so as a, for a quick introduction about myself and uh, Rasmal, I'm Nasr Al-Tamimi, co-founder and uh, chief operating officer of Rasmal. I'm an ex-banker uh, and uh, an active investor. I'm a full-time uh, chief operating officer currently at Rasmal, which was founded in the end of 2019. What we do exactly in Rasmal, Rasmal is a platform that helps startups throughout their funding journey uh, in different aspects, first regarding capital, uh, cap table management, and to understand the investment rounds and their effect on uh, the ownership and cap table of uh, startups, which is quite uh, difficult to understand actually. So we do it in a pretty way, in a demonstrative way to know exactly where are startups and founders heading throughout their funding journey and to negotiate better terms. Uh, additionally, we do help them in their uh, financial aspects and governance aspects. So we have a couple of financial tools we do provide minutes of meeting management and e-voting uh, in terms of governance and the data room management as well to be able to store all related documents of, uh, of a startup on a cloud and be able to share them securely uh, to external parties such as investors and uh, creditors. Amazing, thank you so much. So can you tell us a little bit about your experiences in the first cohort? Uh, well, uh, I could go on, on and on, Hendrik, uh, for, <laughs> for a whole day talking about the accelerator. Uh, actually, uh, myself, I have participated in a couple of accelerators. 
Uh, I cannot compare anyone uh, to each uh, to each other. Uh, each other. Uh, however, uh, this accelerator per se was was amazing. I mean, we had uh, lots of workshops that really helped us. We had we had lots of speakers who are very helpful even after the sessions by approaching them and asking them further questions. Uh, demo day. What can I say? Uh, Launchpad was there. Uh, all, uh, all or most major players in the ecosystem and investors were there. Uh, Misk, any, I cannot uh, thank you enough. Thank you. Amazing. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Nasser. Thank you. Thank you. Super. So let's go over to, 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 to Karim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Kareem Shaban. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Jumlati. Uh, I definitely echo everything Nasser just said. Uh, and he, mashallah, the program was excellent. Um, first of all, you know, when you have the support of uh, an international player like Plug and Play and all the resources you get from them, then you have the local support from MISC. Um, it's unlimited resources, really. So. What's unique about this program is, um, you know, it's it's not just Saudi-based companies, it's also international companies coming in. It's 20 startups. We're all going through the exact same problems. We all have the exact same pain points, but we're entirely um, different backgrounds, different sectors. Um, so there's great diversity over there and you, you're able to kind of learn from each other's experiences and, you know, get their support. Um, from our perspective, you know, having the one-on-one -on -one sessions with the MISC and plug and play team, you know, at the beginning, Henrik, if you remember our discussions, we were talking about how to increase retention. We talked about the acquisition loops. Then we needed some support setting up, you know, the, the entity, you know, uh, properly in Saudi Arabia. We got unlimited support from Saja and the whole MISC team. Uh, then from, you know, raising the rounds, the multiple introductions that you guys made for us that were really great. Um, and then just to top it off, the last week, which was uh, demo day, and you know, we had the week where we got to meet with each other. I think um, the, the, the one feedback I had, Henrik, was uh, maybe we should also have an in-person session at the beginning. And so it's good to see that uh, you've introduced that. So definitely, you know, getting to see everyone in person was great. So um, we, Jumlity benefited a lot. It was nice that the whole team also was able to join and to learn from, from you know, these sessions. The guest speakers were amazing, you know, from uh, Hassan Attar, who came and spoke about um, the, the startup landscape and everything exciting that's happened in the last year. Uh, we had uh, as well um, Nilio, who is one of the best growth marketers in the industry. We had uh, the former co-founder and CEO of uh, Namshi, you know, what better person to learn from and to talk about how they progressed. Um, for Jumlati, you know, um, it was at a period where we were in between, you know, being a startup post MVP and actually scaling. So the support we got over there, especially as a operation heavy business uh, was, was, very, was very nice. So yeah, that's overall my experience. I'm happy to take any questions if you guys have any. Fantastic. Yeah, so please uh, put all your questions also to, to, to our two fantastic alumni uh, participants here in the in the chat box. But maybe also very quickly, uh, Karim, maybe you can also just explain a little bit about the uh, Jumlati and you are and your journey. Yeah. Um, so Jumlati is a bulk uh, grocery delivery platform in Saudi Arabia. So you can kind of think of us as Costco online. So all your bulk essentials, fast uh, the long shelf life items. You're talking about the cartons of water, the laundry powder, cleaning products, you know, rice, oil, all your household essentials that are not perishable items. Um, the way we came about this concept was I lived for about 10 years in Canada where I went to high school and university there. Um, you know, Costco was a regular part of my shopping experience. Uh, fast forward, I worked for two years in the UK uh, as an investment analyst at Iverson Capital. Then. I moved to Saudi to be closer to the family when COVID happened. I realized my household, we were buying, you know, pretty much in bulk, but from Danube, so pre premium supermarkets, which made no sense at all. I started to, you know, try to figure out where is the wholesale market in Saudi, you know, what's the Costco equivalent. 
I realized, you know, most people here didn't even know where it was. And when I visited it for myself, I discovered, you know, the wholesale industry is really, it's a broken market in Saudi. And to put it simply, it's an experience not fit for millennials. It's a very negative user experience. <laughs> so within two weeks, we, we launched, you know, a type form platform. And um, we ran a couple of ad campaigns over, um, over 24 hours. We got about 800 people who had signed up and expressed an interest. And alhamdulillah, month on month, the traction continued to grow. We have very sticky customers um, who give us a lot of feedback, good and bad ones. So alhamdulillah, and it's, it's been great. And then the support we had during this program really helped kind of take us to the next, to the next step where now we're in a position where we're able to grow and scale the business across Saudi Arabia. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, That's great. Me I'm waiting for you guys to operate in Riyadh. <laughs> Yalla, within the, next, within the next two weeks, inshallah, we're almost there. <laughs> Amazing. You got your first customer right there. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, guys. So thank you so much. Yeah. Let me just tell. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Kareem and Nasser. Uh, really. And this is uh, for you all. It's just. Uh, an example of the great founders we had in cohort one. Uh, yeah, and thank Absolutely. you so much, guys. Yeah, and you know, the, the nice thing is uh, MISC wants this program to kind of be, you know, a, a community where the first cohort can be there to support the second cohort. Yes. You know, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Saja or Henrik, if you want to share our contact details, it would be absolutely our pleasure to support with anything you guys are going to, because really, we all encounter the exact same problems. It's just slightly different examples, you know? <laughs> exactly. And we're so looking forward to bringing in the, 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 the alumni, the cohort ones, and to meet the, the new alumni, but also utilizing some of the, some of the, 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 the alumni as experts or the next cohort, or as mentors, or so on to, to support them the entirety of it. As you guys so rightly said, it's about the community, it's about the ecosystem uh, in, in, in that, and there's so much going on, and it's exciting to see the energy and everything that's happening in the kingdom, and we are at the, at the moment, so very, very exciting, and very, very exciting things are happening. So thank you so much, guys. That was absolutely fantastic. So what do you think, Satya? Should we open up for some of the, 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 the questions? Yep. Let's let's see some of the questions we received. Uh, okay. Wait a second. So far. Uh, so we have a question that, that say, so can I ask if the accelerator provide financial support during or after the program? Uh, and uh, the questions as covered in the, during the overview, uh, the MISC Accelerator does not uh, provide funding during the program. And so it's, uh, 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 it has zero cost and zero equity uh, to join the program. But we do give uh, the startups the chance to, uh, to, we do introduction with the potential investors or during the demo day, we give uh, startups the chance to uh, present uh, during the demo day. So definitely there is lots of chances to uh, raise funds, uh, but yeah, the programs doesn't uh, directly invest. No, exactly. I see there's, uh, there's quite a lot coming through. Let's, let's take them uh, a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. One that's asking here, what support and mentorship does the Accelerator program uh, provide? So as you mentioned during the, the presentation, there's a lot of aspects uh, to, 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 the, to the program. There are your weekly workshops and masterclasses, there are mixers, there are deal flow, there are networkings, there are clinics, there are social gatherings, there are updates with, with all the, the, the startups, um, and there are access to, to, to a huge list of, of mentors and experts, and of course, access to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, to regional, local, and international VC community for, for, for all this. This is just a small thing, small part of the support and mentorships that, that we're supporting in. And I hope that answers that question. Do you want to take the next one, uh, Saja? Yep. So there is a question that asks if uh, does, does MISC Accelerator support the entry of foreign startups uh, to PSA? Uh, and the answer definitely yes. So this is one of the main things to offer for uh, uh, for any startup that's looking to scale to KSA. So we have uh, 
partnerships uh, with different ministries here, here in Saudi, including the uh, Ministry of Investment. And uh, we, we will support you to get uh, the entrepreneurship license through MISA and set up uh, and everything. Uh, and definitely, it's, uh, if you join the program, it's your time during the program, if you are a foreign startup, to explore the market further uh, and make the decision. But definitely, uh, we, we support. Yep. Super. Any other questions uh, coming through? So there's a question here. Do the startups have to attend the, the program physically? Um, some of it will be virtual, some of it will be, be, be physically, but as both uh, Karim and Nasser also so, so mentioned, I think that the physical aspect, and I think that was one of the things that we couldn't get to work in the beginning of the, of the last cohort because of the COVID the pandemic, of course, was to have that first uh, first week uh, to, to together in, in that. So I think that will be very valuable for, for all the, the, the startups, as we also heard our two alumni here talking about in that. So, but the, the, the program and attending the, the, the classes, the master classes, no, it's not mandatory, but we would do ask the, the, the startups to the participate, to participate as many of these, these things. But I will also say that we are bringing a lot of effort, both from MISC and from Plug and Play, to bring in exceptional weekly speakers, both from the startup community, from the expert community, from here, from the region, and from a global basis, and also Silicon Valley, we're having speakers and authors and so on coming to, to talk to them to the cohort so any other questions uh, coming through so karim and nasar are there any questions that the guys should be asking that they're not asking at the moment well one question that asked was what stage of companies do you accept in the cohort uh, so we do accept the early stage uh, mainly seed stage uh, for startups that have uh, uh, a minimum viable product and uh, early traction. Yep, exactly. So, well, I think there are more questions coming in, but we're feeding it from one system into to, to, to the other. Um, yep. So what do you think, Sadia, should we, I know a lot, including myself, have been looking forward to seeing the video uh, between uh, uh, Omar and, and, and Saeed. So maybe we should take that and then when we're yeah. done with the session, we can take more questions. So if there are more questions, you haven't had time to, to put them into the to the to the to the platform, then please just do ask that and do it during the uh, during the next uh, the next uh, element. Because otherwise, I think just to move things along. I am extremely excited and happy to, to, uh, to introduce on behalf of both me and, and Satya, the speakers of our fireside, uh, fireside chat. So this is a, unfortunately a pre-recording because of the time differences and in that. Um, but it gives me great pleasure to introduce Umana Jha. He's chief of programs at Miss Foundation. He oversees more than 25 running programs at the Miss Foundation, the one that Sajan mentioned earlier. He holds many pro, high profile board seats and held leadership positions globally in multiple industries. And prior to joining MISC, he was the CEO of Saudi Ground Services, which I'm sure most of you will know from when you've been, been, been traveling uh, in uh, through, throughout the world from, from Saudi and, and back. As well, we have the founder and CEO of, of Plug and Play, Saeed Amidi. He is one of the most successful venture capitalists in the world. He's based in Silicon Valley and has more than 25 years of early stage investments in, in unicorns behind him. As we mentioned before, another 10 unicorns last year alone was realized in the Plug and Play portfolio globally. So without any further ado, let's open up for, for, for this video and we'll come back to answer some of the other um, questions after this, uh, the, the, this session. So please stop the video, start the video. Hello, Omar, how are you? It is great to come to you from uh, Silicon Valley, California. Ahlan wa sahlan, Saeed. I'm very glad to, to meet you finally. I have um, um, uh, seen a lot and I heard a lot about you, uh, your stories, and um, we have been partners with the plug and play for some time now and um, uh, very glad to have the chance to meet with you even virtually. Thank you so much, Omar. And I hope we can meet each other soon in Riyadh and then uh, in California. 
But if I may, many people know MISC Foundation, but I would love that if you could tell us in a few minutes what uh, portion of MISC Foundation are you responsible for and what would success of the 2030 vision would be in your world, in your world? Well, thanks for the um, uh, for the time with you, and I would like to hear more about your success. But let me start with the, since you asked the question, um, uh, Misc Foundation um, started um, uh, was started by our chairman, His uh, uh, Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince, in two thousand and eleven, <clears throat> a long time back. <clears throat> this is the tenth year of the foundation. And uh, with uh, with one uh, specific focus, which is the human capital of Saudi Arabia, how we can bring up and bring more opportunities to to the Saudis, young men and women, to to flourish and to uh, empower them, to give them the space, and um, and to give them also the knowledge, the the skills to uh, to to basically flourish and 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 achieve their um, highest potential. Um, I am, um, uh, as, um, uh, as a chief programs officer uh, for the MISC Foundation, I am responsible for four tracks. Uh, entrepreneurship is one of them, uh, but we uh, also have um, the uh, MISC community, uh, MISC leadership and MISC skills, uh, all as part of my uh, responsibility uh, in MISC Foundation. Uh, um, so if I, if I may uh, mention, you know, because entrepreneurship is close to my heart. And, uh, you know, I personally started my first company when I was 20 years old. And in fact, one of my original markets was Saudi Arabia, you know, before Saudi became a petrochemical giant. I used to actually export polyethylene and polypropylene to Saudi in the early 80s. And I must say, I have seen Saudi Arabia young generation get great education, not only in Saudi, but around the world. You must have an incredible pool of talent, young educated talent that could really benefit from your programs with plug and play and with other organizations around the world. Can I also ask how do you build the community that you are responsible for? Um, we have multiple communities. Um, I mean, the, um, the the community for entrepreneurs um, and the um, the uh, uh, MISC community, which I will I will come to because this is your question. But we also have um, uh, leadership communities and and, and others. Um, if if you are asking about the MISC community part, it's basically the uh, overall uh, contribution. Uh, from people like me and you, and also the young people to the society and to the uh, good side of, um, of the country. Uh, we bring them together and we also um, help um, the social entrepreneurs um, to, to basically uh, bring their ideas forward and form sort of societies uh, with, um, with the, also the same um, uh, um, uh, with, with, with the same way we, we create the, um, the, the uh, startups, we create uh, the um, uh, social uh, startups, uh, like accelerators or incubators. Wonderful. You know, I have been lucky to be in uh, Northern California, in Silicon Valley now for 40 years. And, you know, initially we saw great companies like HP and then Apple be born here and really change the world. And then, of course, later on, we been a little bit part of the journey of companies like 
Google or Dropbox. You know, in fact, I remember when Google was only four people and it was in my building and later on they really changed the information system or they made it available to the whole world. And if I can share with you with this program we have, Plug and Play and MISC, we have our first graduating class, which is 20 startups. My dream would be if number of these startups grow to build the technology that could really affect uh, the whole ecosystem of Saudi Arabia. Riyadh and then perhaps Middle East and then perhaps the world. What is the biggest dream do you have for some of these startups that are in our program right now? Um, you, you, you just spot on. I mean, we, we wanted these companies to, to change the world, to change uh, uh, the region, to change the, uh, the, uh, um, the way we, uh, we perceive stuff, we use stuff uh, from technology perspective. Um, um, Saudi Arabia is becoming um, a hub for transformation in the region. Um, uh, not only in the technology side, but in, in every aspect um, is, is, is a power of transformation uh, for the region. Um, and uh, with the youth um, that we have, our uh, very valuable resources that we have, um, 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 it's possible. And um, uh, I see that these companies plus the other companies that we are helping to to either start or uh, grow or accelerate or even go beyond Saudi Arabia uh, and, and, and expand outside the, the borders, uh, we hope uh, that um, you know, Saudi Arabia um, um, as a nation becomes uh, the actual um, hub for uh, entrepreneurs in the region and maybe one of those uh, big hubs uh, in the world. Wonderful. Do you think we can find a unicorn like N26 in this batch of 20 startups? I, I learned that there is 15 from Saudi and five from the neighboring country. Can you please tell me which one is going to be Google or N26 <laughs> so I can invest in them? <laughs> Well, you can uh, basically bet on all of them because, um, you know, uh, you, you never know. All of them are very strong. Uh, this patch is very unique. Uh, we've been working with, uh, with startups since uh, three, four years now. And um, to be honest, this, uh, this batch is, is really, really unique. Uh, with also plug and play, you, you guys have uh, uh, pretty good experience in picking up the, the right ones. So. Let me ask you, how did you pick Google or PayPal at that point of time? Um, how did you know that these companies have been the, uh, you know, like the most um, investable um, uh, uh, opportunities for you? Yeah, you know, in fact, like when I evaluate a startup, my number one criteria is the technology and Let's say if Larry and Sergey, who were both at Stanford in their PhD program, the, the team has to be technically savvy enough to build the product. And the product, after the technical capability, we, I try to see if they are trying to solve a big problem. Like in the case of Google, organizing information of the world, then you'd also need to be at the right timing for the technology businesses to work. You know, again, this mobile phone and this, you know, hardware that we have with so much power has enabled Uber to become Uber. Let's say that if Uber had a great idea, but we did not have this smartphone with geolocation and you know all of these maps at our fingertip, 
Google, I mean, Uber would not have been super successful. So we try to pick the right technology that is going to either enhance an industry, like digitally transform banking, insurance, health, like digital health and remote health. But we also like technologies that disrupt an industry, like banking, like N26 in uh, Germany, now has become the second most valued bank in Germany in seven years. So we love both. We love disruptors and we love mm -hmm. enablers. And we really hope in Saudi Arabia we can find both. Um, you mentioned, um, Saeed, the, um, the founders. Um, how founders can basically change the game? Uh, um, sometimes you, you, you start with an idea, but you don't know how, what, to what extent you can uh, uh, get this idea to. Um, what is the DNA that you look in when you, when you, when you try to, to, to see a founder? Well, wonderful. I thought it's going to be me asking you questions, but now you're well, asking it's, it's me. both ways. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. No, but in general, you know, like, as you may know or not know, I do not have an engineering degree, but I really love technical founders, the people who can build software and the product themselves. But other than technical capabilities, I always, this is a question I ask the entrepreneur, if this thing doesn't work, what is your, what are you going to do next? And I usually like the entrepreneur to say, I don't have another plan. This is going to work. And as you said, sometimes you need to pivot a little, you know, maybe change the product. Uh, offering a little bit, but I want the entrepreneurs to be so passionate that this is their life. And usually I try to find a team that has worked very hard for at least like one year. They could be still students while they are building their dream and their product. And then they have to be the most knowledgeable person in the room about the product that they like to build. They have to know the competition. They have to know success stories in US, in Europe. So I really, for me, the hard work and the passion of the entrepreneur is absolutely necessary with the technical capability. I just was wondering, you were telling me about how do you build leadership and develop the skills. And you mentioned you start at the age 16 and uh, you work with the, you know, the different men and women and that they are talented in science or uh, some sort of thing and you develop that farther. How do you do that? Yeah, we, we, we basically take them to the top schools of the world. This is our job. We, uh, we, we, uh, we prepare them to, to be um, uh, part of the uh, top schools in the world. Uh, but our job doesn't stop, um, stop there. Uh, we, during their um, education, uh, which is bachelor's degree or master's degree, like four or six years, um, we also get them involved with um, with what is happening in Saudi Arabia um, uh, through a program called the fellowship program. Uh, that's a program that is basically exposing those um, um, talented engineers or doctors uh, studying in MIT or Stanford or um, any other uh, university, top university in the world, to what is happening in Saudi Arabia, to what's happening in the world, to develop also their leadership capabilities. So they are not isolated or only focused on the science part of, uh, of what they do, but they get, um, you know, around it 
knowledge uh, and then build their their um, uh, leadership capabilities in different aspects. Wonderful. Uh, if I if I can share with you a program that I think is one of the best in the world. You know, we are helping National University of Singapore and every year they send 50 students like in their junior year, not senior year, to mm -hmm. California. And they work at a startup half time and they go to Stanford University half time. And then they go back to Singapore to finish their senior year. And I can tell you, like, I have over 100 startups that I have invested in in Singapore and over 500 that I have accelerated. The best startups in Singapore, the entrepreneur are part of this program. You know, and they don't only send 50 students to Stanford. I have heard they send 50 students to Shanghai, and I have heard they send 50 students to Boston and also Europe. So it is in an exchange of entrepreneurs and students, I think is the best way to develop their mind and for them to think bigger to solve global problems. I, I and again, I, I congratulate you on your fellowship program. First, let me say thank you so much for, uh, you know, starting this relationship with us. And we will really look forward to working with you and with your team to be able to help many, many startups and entrepreneurs build their dream. And really, I look forward to developing our personal relationship as this uh, program continues and expands. And I would love to come to see you in Riyadh and uh, vice versa. We would love to invite you to California to come and see us. And it's been a great, great pleasure talking with you and uh, looking forward to many, many more conversations together. It is really my pride and joy to congratulate you, the 20 graduates of our what we call our first batch of the group between Plug and Play and MISC uh, Foundation. I like to also, I always like a little antidote story. I talked about N26 out of Berlin, Germany. They were part of our first batch of uh, Axel Springer plug and play. And we really look forward to your journey. And, you know, again, success is a journey more than a destination and now you're part of the miss community you're part of plug and play community and any way we can help you in saudi arabia in the gulf and in europe and us we would love to see you grow your company and become truly a global player and congratulations again you are special to be here and we will really look forward to watching you in your growth and in your journey thank you so much graduating class thank you very much said congratulations to everyone alf mabrook Hello, all. I hope you can hear us. I think we're yep. back in the back in business. Uh, Satya is here. Yes, wonderful. Yep. That was fantastic. I really love that video. Yep, uh, nice insightful chat between Omar and Said. Yes, exactly, exactly. So indeed, let's uh, bring uh, Silicon Valley to, uh, to, to to Riyadh, and let's bring Riyadh to Silicon Valley. 
Yep, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, super. So I am just gonna share my screen again. Here we go. Perfect. So I think we had some uh, quite a few more questions uh, coming in. I think we've got time for a few. What do you think, Saja? Okay, let's uh, let's take a few. Uh, so there is one that says, uh, "What are the main?" Uh, wait, just a second. Okay, uh, so it says, "What are the main aspects that MISC accelerator look at?" Uh, so yeah, as as we said, the eligibility criteria is the, the startup must be text based, early stage, based in Saudi, or or eager to scale in Saudi. But but other than that, so during the filtration process that we do. Uh, we look into uh, further stuff uh, uh, and picking the startups. So some of the stuff that we look at is the uniqueness of the solution for the, the startup, uh, how unique it is, uh, if it's uh, what, what target market it's addressing. Uh, we look at stuff like the scalability and potential uh, for the startup to address uh, global markets. And definitely one of the main things we look at uh, is the team. We want to see an experienced team with the understanding of the market and the product they're serving. Uh, so, so yeah, these are some of the elements we look at when we assess uh, the applications. Yep, exactly. I think that's aligned with the very much with another question we got through so let's make that as a last one what would make a pitch an application stand out versus other what are the top two three things you guys are looking at while you're making your social selection so asadia mentioned we had uh, earlier in this, uh, this, uh, this presentation also a little bit about the criteria that we're looking for with the startups so we're looking at startups in the C states that in the market traction, so post MVP uh, stage in, uh, in, in, in that, preferably uh, a little bit further along the, 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 the journey in, in that. But most of all, as I just mentioned, the potential, the team, the market, the uniqueness of these startups. What we're looking for here is, of course, to find the next big, uh, the next big thing in the, in, in the market, the next Google, if, if you will, or the next N26, if you will, in that. That's what we're ultimately looking for. Those are the startups. So if you want to stand out, these are the things that we're looking at uh, in, in in those things. So we are uh, we're excited. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, applications coming through. I hope a lot of the applications will also be coming through from from today's uh, sessions. In, uh, in 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 that, um, I think if there's any questions or anything please do uh, reach out to, to either uh, Satya or, 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 or of course myself in that if you have any questions any need for any more information in, in that I think uh, Ash and team if we can also share the link to the, um, to, the, to, the, to, the to the to the application uh, website uh, there you can also find more information and so on but please do reach out to, 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 to any of us uh, in that I'm sure we'll find the time to answer some questions from some potential applicants don't you think Satya? Yep. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's it. I guess uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone who joined the session today, uh, especially for those who, uh, who are considering uh, joining cohort two of the MISC Accelerator. Uh, you still have time. Don't forget uh, to apply. Uh, uh, the uh, applications close on January 30. So you have uh, five more days to, to apply. Yes. Super. Okay, great. Oh, all right. I think this concludes our session today. Yep. Thank you so much, Henrik. Thank you so Thanks much, Sacha. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yep. <laughs>